Hey everyone, we have some very exciting news. Myra State Podcast will be having a live show at Dynasty Typewriter in Los Angeles on October 28th at 7.30 p.m. And our special guest is going to be Kelly from Boobies and Newbies. We can't wait. So we are also going to be doing live stream. So anybody and everybody go to our website, myworststatepodcast.com for more details. We'll hope to see you soon. Cheers. The Fall Line is a true crime podcast covering the coldest cases in the southeastern United States and occasionally beyond. We focus on the missing persons, the unsolved murders, and the unidentified does that don't get media attention. Empathetic and intensively researched, The Fall Line will take you on deep dives into unsolved cases that you've never heard of and make you wonder why you haven't. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Keegan. I'm Christina. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what a week. What a week. Yes. Um, I mean, the only thing that I feel like has really happened this week that comes under <laughs> our purview. <laughs> the only under thing. Under our purview. Wait, <laughs> you, you are so underselling the thing that everybody is talking about right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I haven't done a deep dive into it, but obviously I've seen the the Adam Levine you drama. You sent that when it was new. Like yeah. there was like maybe a couple, a couple thousand likes at the time that you sent that My Sumner Stroh video to us. TikTok algorithm Ooh, knows, knows you. me. Mm-hmm. They're like, you want to be in on the drama. Yeah, they were like, mess? Immediately. Mess happened. <laughs> mess Do you want to see it? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw her video and I was like, what is happening because yeah i send it to you guys i was like what what is going on and then it fucking exploded i have to say this though is anybody surprised that adam levine is like this like no it's not surprising i i said it back in the day like back when i was in high school i remember getting the ick from adam levine Mm -hmm. because he always cast Victoria's Secret models, models, very people of a very specific type yep. in his videos. And his videos were all the same. Every Maroon 5 video was him making out with a model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, it, and it I felt mean, to me, even at the time, I was like, you are, you are if setting I, yourself up to be able to make out with as many hot people as possible. If I was Maroon 5, would do same. But <laughs> my favorite <laughs> comment me, so already, far. I was like, oh. Yes. <laughs> that he looks like a chipotle bag and now i can't unsee it <laughs> when you look at adam levine's shirtless someone's like tell me he does not look exactly like yeah. a chipotle bag. you're not wrong <laughs> you're not wrong my favorite thing is that what's come out of this is that he does text like a high school freshman oh his like- sexting <laughs> listen i oh. sexted a lot when i was on the apps sure. and no one was as bad as Adam Levine. No one. It's, it's, it's cringy. Wait, worst. which also makes it sound like you sexed with Adam Levine. Yeah. No. Yes, it does. <laughs> I was like, wait, should we clarify that? Adam Levine oh, was my check. worst sexting experience. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, check shit. my DMs. Maybe I have some receipts too. <laughs> I mean, he DM'd everybody in the whole fucking world I know. too. I'm like, I mean, it, it is weird because there's definitely this like this this conversation right to be had around it. It's like, is that cheating? I think it's definitely sus. It's definitely. Let me tell you, if I'm dating or married to that guy, I don't fucking like it. No. Yeah. No. What's because I guess the yeah. Question if I found is, out Chris was like sexting with somebody. Yeah. yeah and, and what's the intention? Yeah. I think is the thing is nobody is just like he's not reaching out to these women because he's looking for friends. Yeah. No. So it's like, what are you looking for? Is the is the question there? Because it's like, yeah. I don't know. We could argue all day long about whether or not this is technically cheating, but it's something he was hiding from his partner. So yeah, yeah. Mm. Suspicious. And if you're hiding it, then yeah, you know in your then heart you, that there's it's something not. To hide. And yeah. okay, let's really talk about the real thing that's uh, uh would have me like losing my fucking shit if I found out, and that is. Wanting to name your baby. If I'm pregnant, no, I, just I got swear chills. to fucking if God. If I am fucking pregnant, I swear to God. And I find out that you suggested a name for our baby that was 
a woman that you were sexting with or having an affair with, whichever it might be. That I would that would be the tipping point for me. What? It's bad enough that you're sexting, but then you that is to wow. me uh-huh. that's so fucking gross and disrespectful. Uh-huh. And let's talk about the percentage of men who fucking cheat on their pregnant partners. Oh, oh yeah, it's oh, high. honestly, fuck it's you. Huge. Yeah, it's high. And I'm like. Especially I, when I am the horniest when I'm pregnant, like, and you're, if you're cheating on me. Well, Adam Levine has a very specific type and that type is very, very thin. So I don't know how he feels about his wife getting pregnant. Which it's like that alone, I feel, and I have not been pregnant um, for a lot of, of reasons, but like, to me, it seems like something very Most drastic control related <laughs> very drastic that you're doing with your body this is a very it's dangerous it's it's a lot of things yeah. and your partner is going to step out on you Oof. during that vulnerable time i i think for me that even like kicks it up a notch That's like right. i'm fucking doing this thing for and us? you oh my god yeah. my fucking head would explode yeah 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 well in comments under that initial video and so i made a tiktok because i was like this is what's blowing my mind is the number of people in the comments who were like oh yeah my dad named my sister after the woman that he was cheating on my mom with my grandpa named my 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 mom after his first wife like it was like it was so many like there were so many of those too many yeah and then there was one that was like oh this one pissed me off it was my dad named a boy that he had with another woman the name that my mom had picked out if they were gonna have a boy i swear to you and i was like oh (laughs) the fucking audacity oh that is just like just choose the name that we mm, picked out disrespectful for our son Mm -hmm. and you cheated on me Mm -hmm. had a son with somebody else Mm -hmm. and you took that fucking my name that's just a complete lack of empathy that's somebody that's not thinking, I wonder if this thing would be hurtful. Like, they at don't all. none at all. Yeah, they have no, no concern. Nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. That's like psychopath behavior, honestly. <sighs> yes. I think it's psychopathic. It's truly, yeah. And it's it's very, it, it made everybody, people in the comments were like, I'm never letting my husband <laughs> name Choose a name. child. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because they're like, I, I, this happens way too often. And I feel like there has to be something psycho- like psychological about that. Like, I don't understand that. Like, if you cheated on your wife with somebody. Oh, and, why would you want a constant, constant reminder? reminder? Like, oh. because you're sick, right? Like, because why would you? Sick. Yeah. Because you know something your wife doesn't know. It's like a little secret oh, where like every time you say your kid's gross. name. That's it, absolutely gross. It is. That is. That is. Weird. Yeah, that to me, that's the, the so worst part. There are so many names out there. You do not need to name your kid Sumner. But then the other thing too, when his other texts came out, what shocked me beyond the fucking terrible sexting it's was true, how many yeah. times he brought up his wife and baby. Uh-huh. Like Every to time. use as a conversation starter or whatever to every woman almost that i saw the the dms for so i mean and maybe he makes himself feel better by saying like well i was out in the open about it but it's fucking it's it's weird it's a weird disconnect that he has he really strikes me as the kind of person who just like needs attention or validation in that way and hasn't had a lot of consequences has always kind of been able to do what he wants so he i don't even think he thought for a second that this was going to blow up on him at all you yeah. know, like, it, mm. so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there, that's <laughs> happening. But yeah, no, I, I am firmly in the, like, I know there's a lot of people that are talking about whether it's cheating or not. And I think that that is up to you and your partner. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, and the boundaries that you have set, but I know for myself, I would not be comfortable with well, that. And regardless of whether or not you think this is cheating I, I'm not naming my fucking kids some. Well, that's for sure. And also, I just feel like if somebody is this bold to be sexting with people on his personal Instagram account, like that oh, has yeah. his name, he was taking videos and photos of himself and sending them to these women. So it's like, it's not like it was somebody, he can't say he was hacked or whatever. He's definitely doing questionable stuff in person with people. Like he just is. Like, yeah. And whether or not that means he's sleeping with other people, I don't know. But like anybody who's that bold is acting inappropriately in person as well. I just, I truly think that he is 
a juvenile. Like, I really don't think he thought he was doing anything wrong. I think he didn't think he was doing anything wrong because maybe he hasn't done those things. Like, he's like, what? I'm just talking to these people, so, you know? Yeah. Oh, I really that think that be. he's very, like, immature. Like, I think there's a level of immaturity that's happening here. Like you said, with not having consequences, with not ever having to, like... Yeah. It's just a real... That could be, truly, yeah. Like, you're, you're, he's, like, 23 permanently there's something like i said we've said this before like uh-huh. when celebrities reach like a certain celebrity status yeah. at like a young under 25 year old age where they've not fully matured it's kind of like stunts their growth and they kind of get stuck at this place because everyone will treat them the same mm-hmm. it's the line never goes up or down so yeah. it just kind of stays at the steady pace of like you can always act like you're 23 because you got famous when you were 23 and you get and you get paid for that you know right, what yeah. I mean like you get rewarded for yeah and for in the his most mind, part he's like why I I didn't do anything wrong yeah. I'm just talking to her she seems really cool I really <laughs> like the name Sumner you know like you just feel like he's that dumb <laughs> no he does you know? kind of strike you that yeah he really does feel that dumb. not very smart yeah 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 i got that impression for a while here <laughs> you know <laughs> that he's not i just like i don't think that he's malicious is the the thing I and don't know. i don't think that i just think he's that dumb i don't think it's right i don't think it's okay i don't think it's all right to arrest your development at 23 and never mature beyond that point point. and I don't, I don't think you shouldn't have consequences yeah. for the action and i don't think that she shouldn't fucking be like fuck you this isn't appropriate behavior. And if she wants to leave him, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't blame her. I don't know if I think that what he was doing was malicious, but I do think that he knew, like if we're, if we're using the same thing that you would be doing in a court of law, it's like, Mm -hmm. well, were they aware that what they were doing was wrong? I think that yes, he was aware of that. Like I, I think he was, or he wouldn't have been keeping it a secret right you know so um because if he really thought it was fine then he could have open conversations with his wife about it you know and i the fact that he wasn't leads me to believe that he there's part of him he that knew that it was that she wouldn't like it yeah, yeah. whether or not he thought that that was like dumb or not because i'm not even doing anything he still knew that she wouldn't like that right you know? yeah and i think the main the other main thing about this this thing that's given me the ick is like how much people are not throwing ick on on adam they the just one- started to but okay it, it took it took a it while took too yeah, long before it, really it was like me. all about the, mm-hmm. the women too long and it's like listen i get it like it's it's really difficult to not be angry at someone that knows that you're married or whatever and somebody's trying to get in like it's it's hard i have been in that situation and but yeah i mean the main person that made the promise to you is the one that that really truly fucked yeah, up yeah the one stepping out's the one stepping out period. right well and look i'm I, not in a relationship with this sumner person i'm right. in a relationship with adam and i well, think that but. she's there've been arguments that have been made you know that like she she's trying to like be a victim or whatever. And she was like, but in my opinion, she is not in the position of power here. Right. Right. Like mm-hmm. Adam Levine is Adam Levine. Right. And he, I think very You're intentionally. Not say no. Yeah. He very, in- and he very intentionally went after, he wasn't going after other Victoria's secret models. He wasn't going after other people who are on the same level of celebrity as he was. True. He was going after Instagram models who were 22 23 right very specifically because he knew that he could use his star power Wasn't and celebrity he also like telling them to like oh my marriage is like bad well that's what whatever. she says she says so. that that's what he was saying to her which mm. i mean i don't know if he was or not but regardless it feels very intentional to be seeking out women who are 20 years younger than you who aren't on the same level of celebrity as you right. who probably grew up listening to your music yeah. and being you know um you know that you can wow them with this certain amount of star power that you can wield you know yeah and i think he was very intentionally wielding that star power yeah and using it as leverage and like that's regardless of like you know 23 is old enough to know better that's the truth but you yeah. have to, I mean... Yeah, there is definitely a power difference there, mm-hmm. for sure. Ugh, well, enough with that. Yeah, <laughs> it feels gross. I don't really like talking about it because the whole thing feels very, like, icky and weird to me. Like, yeah. sad. I feel like, I don't know if TikTok has opened up this new mess or this new level of drama where it feels like 
we all get to have an opinion about other people's situations. Yeah. Um, which sounds weird because I literally have a podcast where I routinely have opinions about other people's right. dates well, and yeah, shit like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, it does. It does seem like everyone's, and I did see a TikTok where someone was like, I need more information, not about this, but it was a different mess where someone's like, I need more information because I need to know whose side I'm on. And I need to know like right. the yeah. background, yeah. who I'm cheering for, who I'm rooting against. And I was like, oh my God, that's so true. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's true. And it, it, there is this feeling like you have to plant your flag somewhere. Yeah, sure. Right. And so and I think also people rush to yes. judge before they have all of the information. And then by the time they get more information, they're like, well, I've already planted my flag over here, so I can't. I can't, I can't backtrack back down. Yeah. I can't change my mind about anything. And I think, yeah, I don't think it's TikTok though. I feel like we've been doing like, this it's like social since, media since my space, probably, you know what I mean? Like, I think even before that, I think that that's the nature of celebrity culture for sure. is like oh us, us being able to be, sure. that's tabloid culture. That's, that's exactly. us being able to say, I'm team Jennifer. I'm team Aunt Angelina. Right. Like oh, I think yeah. that that's just how we are as people. I think it's very natural to be that way. But I do think that, that whenever I, as I get older, as I'm examining it, I don't want, I don't want, I don't love it that I'm that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not yeah. like, I'm not like, this feels good. You know, like, yeah. Would TikTok exist if we could all have nuanced, like opinions in the gray <laughs> <laughs> or does it exist oh, no. <laughs> specifically because we have to be outraged about something? Well, yeah, yeah. And the truth is like those having strong opinions those videos are always going to do better. Yeah. Like being like planting well, your flag in one place or another is always going to be more interesting to watch. Well, especially if it can vilify a woman, let's be oh, honest. Oh God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, good topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well on that note, who are we going to FMK this oh, week? Wow. Oh. I know. We <laughs> Where came to go hard. from here. Exactly. I mean, I certainly would not want to throw, uh, I'm, I'm not touching Adam Levine or Maroon 5 with a like 10 foot pole. No. But uh, we could. I have an idea. Yes. We haven't done a social media one since we did, since TikTok's really been a thing. I think uh -huh. we should do TikToks, TikTok, YouTube shorts, and Instagram, Instagram reels. reels. Oh, a okay. hundred. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I have very strong I know. opinions about this. Do it. Yes. Because you go first. We just set up YouTube shorts. Which, hey, go follow our, us on YouTube. I mean, yeah. you could hate By the way, go, go subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel. YouTube <laughs> is not something that I have ever aspired to be a part of, nor um, do I enjoy uh, being on it. I will definitely watch some videos on youtube and i've i've never i've always steered clear to, of the comment section the comment section huh. on youtube is the biggest cesspool yeah. vile. of vile awful yeah disgusting yeah. comments people are just fucking mean and for it, the sake of me genuinely just and as someone who spends a lot of time on youtube i actually really like youtube um you know i follow people on youtube i enjoy youtube but disable the comments you or I mean a lot <laughs> Just, of a lot of the yeah. creators that I follow do have um, flags on certain comments so that like they don't get posted because they don't want to see it either because the thing about YouTube is it doesn't matter what the video is. It can be a video mm -hmm. of kittens playing and there will be somebody in the comments saying something nasty, hateful, Incel. racist yeah, about, exactly. on a video of just like puppies frolicking in a field. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? So they're constantly looking for things to be like negative and mean and nasty about. It feels like middle school again. Yeah. Honestly, like whenever I go on there, I'm like, I just get, I'm very like triggered. Yeah. It feels like I'm... I'm like 12 again and just oh it's For me, so it's, gross it's the impulse i have to control my impulse to not respond yeah. like that's the thing for me is that like oh i got because, all the snarky comments in the yeah back of my head. i i can't but you can't engage them but because, you can't because it will just make it worse because i'm like yeah, it's I, like picking a zit uh-huh i'm like i don't care that you're saying this thing about me but i do kind of want to fucking come back at you but i'm like no nope walk away <laughs> like sorry right. just walk away you have to and I, I have to say that fucking Instagram reels to me, it just reeks of desperation. It's so desperate. Yes. It's yes. So and it's like the like, same trend from And not from the TikTok. people who are doing reels. No. It's just Instagram. It's just Instagram. Yeah. Desperate is 
to Facebook compete. and Instagram right now, to me, I'm Ugh. just like, can we fucking decide? Like the only thing about Facebook, the only thing is our group. That's it. I would That's honestly it. drop Facebook like a hot fucking Never potato. Never been happier. A bunch of cat groups. Not like cat because groups in our it group. That's is it. so yeah. Facebook sucks <laughs> now. Worst. It sucks, sucks, sucks. Facebook Other than and our group, Instagram have a real "Hey, fellow kids" quality. Oh, oh totally. God, like they're so trying Buscemi with the skateboard. Yeah, if they're trying like, so hard, they're like, "We're relevant. We're cool." And you're like, "No, you're not, baby. No, I Stay remember. remember yeah, I remember that feeling when MySpace was like." This ain't the this ain't this it ain't anymore. anymore. Yeah, like and it was like a collective feeling. We yeah. all had it. We all knew. We were like, nope, back the yeah. chair up, and yeah. got on to Facebook. And I'm like, the exact same feeling is happening right now. Yeah. And uh-huh. the Instagram Reels is that yeah. last desperate ploy. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But mm. then to also too, to be fair, if I'm in an FMK situation, I have to look at it like this, right? I I do look at TikTok. Might be a little too cool for me right like oh. tiktok might be like it's cool and i definitely feel at home there i feel comfortable but i feel like comfortable in like the social setting of it right like oh i can hang out but do i marry it like you i don't like know one on one oh it's like dating the guy that's too hot too for you hot. yeah you're I, out of my league and i can understand that yeah and i feel like i feel like i'm like in my heart am I, my instagram i my instagram i might instagram? be well here's the thing like I do feel like Instagram is kind of like when your husband got a little too old. I'm not speaking for myself or any <laughs> personal experience. I'm talking about like, you remember like the 80s? It was like a trope for guy, like older men to go through like their midlife crisis. Uh-huh. Yes, I feel yeah. like Instagram is a man Instagram, who has bought a motorcycle. Yes, yeah. He's a little bit too old to be driving that motorcycle, mm-hmm. but you still want to support him a little bit because you're like, oh yeah, you bought know what? Bought his first Life's pair short. of leather pants. He grew like, his hair okay. into a mullet. Yeah. Started working out again. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You come home. And there's a bow flex in the garage. Yeah, like, like what? <laughs> <laughs> Triggered. My dad totally bought a bow flex. <laughs> yeah, like it's 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 Instagram just got it's going through a midlife crisis, and yeah. you're just like, you know, it's fine. Whereas TikTok is like one of those like effortlessly cool people yeah. that I I never feel like I I always feel like I have to try a little bit to be cool, which is hence why I'm not cool. Yeah, that's me too. I'm uh, yeah, because they know they know when you're trying. Yeah, and huh. and always when I try is when I'm at my most like clumsy and oh, yeah, yeah. it's just uh, yeah. But. <laughs> you're hysterical. Oh. You are when you're trying. You're just like I just fell down the steps. <laughs> I'm like oh god damn it, Keegan. <laughs> you're like oh I tripped over that guy and spilled his drink. <laughs> it's I just threw ice at them. Yeah, like. <laughs> Keegan. Ah, Keegan. <laughs> so funny. I know. And Walk Julie, between us. Like, my, <laughs> Hold her hands. My like New Year's resolution was like, I'm going to treat myself like I'm the coolest person in the room in any room I go into. It doesn't work. It's just not part of my like genetic makeup at all. Like It's uh, oddly part of mine. I don't yeah, understand. No, you have, I have a real no, easy I don't understand it. You. I have no, I have the, I am the audacity. Yeah. If anybody is the audacity in this fucking room, it's me. I have no reason reason there's nothing about me but there are times especially when people underestimate me where i'm like (laughs) okay you think you're gonna come like i don't know where it comes from i don't know if i got too many pats on the back as a kid or something but i have the audacity no it's a good thing like I'm the coolest person in the room. That's sometimes. how it should it. be. No, it, I don't understand. It's, it's it. better. It's it, better. Then I'm like, I'm like the quiet one that has the face <laughs> on the face, and everyone's yes. like, Is "We she all know, a bitch." Or <laughs> is she judging me right now? And I'm like, secretly, like, yeah, keep it together. Don't be uncool or whatever. But I'm just like the silent one you think yes. that you're just like you're like oh look my, i'm sure that i look like i'm just smiling and nodding and exactly and meanwhile and I'm, your I'm face like, is like, like stone and judge. Every, everyone is like oh god damn it i'm not cool <laughs> enough to be around her am i I know god. and i'm not cool at all in my head that's so funny you know uh, okay though okay for me ah uh, this is hard it I, is hard i feel like i I, and this might be a mistake. It's going to be a, a lifetime of um, tripping over myself. I'm going to marry TikTok. Yeah. yeah. I just, yeah. TikTok makes me feel good about myself. It's honestly the only social media that yeah. I've ever enjoyed in my life. Yeah. It really is. And it, it genuinely, I mean, not that I've not 
like I've gotten 100% positive comments on TikTok because I, I haven't. I've gotten bad comments on TikTok as well. But overall, I've gotten such lovely comments. I feel like people go out of their way to, to find something kind to say yeah. on TikTok. It is the opposite of, of YouTube oh. in that like I feel like even when I post a picture where I'm like or a video. Do you think it's because more women are active on TikTok? Maybe. Maybe it is because more of a woman's it space. Is usually women. Agree. It You're is right. usually women who are complimenting me, even when I feel like I look busted on there and I just got on there to yeah. do something quick the, with no makeup the on. Comments are lovely. They yeah. are. It's it's just a lovelier space, and the way that you can make it the exact space that, that you, you want, want mm -hmm. with little effort. I'm like, it knows exactly mm -hmm. what I'm in the mood to see. Mm -hmm. I'm just like. It knows me. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's why I want to marry it marry too. It. Because it's yeah. just like. It understands. It sees me. Yeah. It yeah. sees me. <laughs> yeah. it and it doesn't me. judge. Yeah. No. It's yeah. just like, I see you. And yes. I'm like, yeah. you do. TikTok, yeah. And you do. it's true. I'll go a lifetime of always playing second fiddle in public to my spouse, TikTok. Because TikTok is always going to be the life of the party. Like you're, yeah. if you're married to TikTok, you're never going to be the the life of the party that's just is what it is but, but at the I'm end okay of the day it. it sees and accepts you yeah. and i'm like yeah. i just feel yeah. fine. you're right i'm gonna marry tiktok yeah too. I, I just feel like it's the best option now it's gonna of, make me feel good mm -hmm. yeah yeah of the other two Ooh. Ooh. i think I, I know what i'm gonna do I, I will say this i will say this because i got i got for the first time ever, I got wrapped up in YouTube Shorts where I was on the YouTube app, and it YouTube kept me Shorts is the the guy with the mattress on the floor. I think it fucks better. Yes. I'll yeah. say it here. I was YouTube just say, Short. You're gonna fuck. Yes. yes, yes. You're so right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fuck you. Instagram yes. Reel would probably like. It, it, it's, it's just it's it would be awkward you. it would be awkward you. you might not you it's know it's gonna take you to an Applebee's. performance issues like that that's the difference is like. It's going to try. Instagram Reels is going to try, but it's going to try in the way that like it picks you up in a Tonda Accord. It takes oh. you to Applebee's. Yep. Yeah. And then you're going to have Baby mediocre sex on beige sheets. And like that's it's it's fine. YouTube, but, like, YouTube shorts, shorts has it's like, chaos. Yeah, exactly. You're doing coke somewhere yep. and like yep. fucking uh -huh. it's yep. like four o'clock in the morning. You're fucking in a dirty ass bathroom. Uh -huh. yeah, like, or like in the gay alley bar. behind a dumpster just up against the wall. Oh, like it's and fun. it's so goddamn good. It is. It came dick. twice. You didn't even know you could. It, You're like, goddamn. Dick and you, that you will always yeah. remember. Hold your hair just right. Mm -hmm. You keep the number in your phone as YouTube shorts do, do not, not answer. answer. Yeah. But you still end up texting <laughs> at like 3 a.m. And it's like three years since you fucked. You know what I mean? But it's like, like mm. that dick haunts you like Casper. <laughs> it definitely does. God. It's like, oh my God. And it's a hate fuck because you don't like and him. It's, no, yeah, he's, he's a little mean to you. Yes, you know, but you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> you would never. It. You would never. No, you would never, never tell your tell friends. you guys no. about it. exactly. I could never tell you guys. No, ever. but late at night, <laughs> right before you fall asleep, <laughs> maybe you're in bed next to your partner. That oh, dick still. <laughs> Well, like <laughs> shiver <laughs> and that shiver is just leftover yeah exactly that just came to haunt you you're like oh my god damn. It's like uh -oh. orgasm zombies <laughs> like years later <laughs> Woo! yes yeah. well, i agree i think that that is the absolute correct answer yeah i really do it's not good for you <laughs> no no and never Wrap read the up. comments never read the comments on youtube no never. no it's the lesson we're telling you <laughs> what we're telling you is that don't talk about it yeah keep it deep down bury it bury it. it never bring it up again <laughs> <laughs> oh god well <sighs> you guys want to take five and we'll come back with stories yeah, yeah. this episode is sponsored by framebridge I have to tell you guys about an amazing new service that we found called FrameBridge. FrameBridge makes it easier and more affordable than ever to frame your favorite things without ever leaving the house. Add a gallery wall to your home office or send an easy foolproof gift, especially for all those weddings you have coming up. From art prints and posters to the photos sitting on your phone, you can FrameBridge just about anything. Now here's how it works. You just go to FrameBridge.com and upload your photo or... 
Like me, they'll send you packaging to safely mail in your physical pieces. Preview your item online in dozens of frame styles and gallery wall layouts. Choose your favorite or get free recommendations from their talented designers. Experts at FrameBridge will custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. Instead of the hundreds you'd pay at a framing store, these prices start at $39 and all shipping is free. Plus, my listeners will get 15% off their first order at framebridge.com when they use our code MYWORSTDATE. Order online at framebridge.com or stop by a Framebridge store to work with a designer in person if you're in New York, D.C., Atlanta, Philly, Boston, or Chicago. Get started today. Frame your photos or send someone the perfect gift. Go to framebridge.com and use promo code MYWORSTDATE to save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go again to framebridge.com, promo code my worst date. That's framebridge.com, promo code my worst date. Cheers! My Annie Gale was murdered by Lifespring. In the 1970s and 80s, nearly half a million people went through controversial self help seminars put on by a company called Lifespring. Thousands walked out as true believers, but others said they were scarred for life, and at least three people died. Welcome to Good Cult, a new investigative series from Cast Media about Lifespring and its leader, John Hanley. Over six episodes, we'll uncover how a convicted felon and con artist transformed himself into a wildly successful New Age guru. And the thing that really irritates me is this mother is still making money. And we're back. Okay, I'm going to kick us off with stories. This is one that we got in our inbox. It says, Hi, ladies. I have been binge listening to your podcast from over here in Brisbane, Australia Yay. for the past six months. Yeah. And I'm telling all my friends how much you make me laugh. I am 59 years old and have been single for just over a year. My longtime bestie told me I was getting boring and needed to get on a dating site and get out there. <laughs> oh, no. Aww. Despite my protestations, she uploaded my profile and the journey began. I had been speaking to a man for a few weeks on Plenty of Fish. Uh-oh. <laughs> he lived, Ma'am, I, you have not been here long enough. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yep, you would have. <laughs> we would have told you. Um <laughs> He lived close by and wasn't pushy. I like that. His name was G. Looking back now, one of the first things I said to him online was, you look familiar. But he lived near our local shopping center, so I thought I had probably seen him around. Oh, no. We had a midweek uh, public holiday, and I asked if he wanted to meet in interest of not dragging out these online chats. He was keen, so I asked for his number, and we arranged to meet at a coffee shop of his choice at 10 a.m. We chatted for a while... I wasn't really attracted to him, but he seemed nice enough. He worked in IT, was a year or two younger than me. He told me he was about to become a grandfather and was very excited. He seemed to imply a couple of times we should meet again, but I had already decided in my own head there was no connection. Hmm. He spoke generally of a girlfriend years past who had shafted him when he lived in another city and that she was a nurse. I replied, better stay away from those characters, thinking that he would know from my profile photos that I was a nurse too. (gasps) And we both laughed. (laughs) We chatted amicably (laughs) for about 45 minutes when I said something in the course of the conversation, which made him ask me, are you a nurse? I replied, yes. And he said, I know a few nurses where you work. He gave me a couple of first names and I couldn't place any of them. And then he said, do you know Chloe? Not her real name, but she worked in the same department as me, so I supplied a surname. He said, yes, that's her, and went white. (gasps) Oh, Oh, no. I told him she was a good friend of mine and asked how he knew her. He just replied noncommittally he'd known her for years. He added quickly not to tell her we had met. It's his wife. Oh, no. (laughs) Because she would give him a hard time about it. I said, How funny is that? Chloe's boyfriend is also named G. (gasps) He suddenly ended the date as he walked away, breaking all land speed records. And on his phone, all pennies began to drop. My friend Chloe's boyfriend worked in IT, lived in the apartment block behind the shopping center, and was about to become a grandfather. Oh. Oh, my God. This couldn't be the biggest coincidence ever. I'm not usually so obtuse, but I never would have expected someone to commit such a dog act. Pretty naive for someone who had been cheated on twice, I guess, but you know the saying, don't shit where you sleep. I then had to wait 
till I calmed down enough to ring her. She had been off work for a month in the UK visiting her daughter, so I still lived in hope that they had maybe broken up since I had last seen oh, her. You don't so want to be that be person. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, she told me that he had been in bed with her that morning. <gasps> And they had just had sex before he came to meet me for coffee. That's fucking gross. My Mm -hmm. God. And they had dinner plans for tonight. (gasps) Oh my God. He had taken his profile down by now, so I couldn't send her screenshots from Plenty of Fish, but I had the text messages from my phone, which we confirmed was clearly his number. Yep. She was understandably devastated. And then when they went to dinner that night, Mm, uh, I hope so. There was nothing I could do to make her feel better. Chloe is one of the nicest, most Aww. genuine people I know. I couldn't believe how stupid this man was to actually throw his girlfriend's name around like that. She doesn't have a common name, and he mentioned the actual department we both worked in. What wow. a fucking idiot. Yes. Moron. He apparently had multiple advanced degrees and is working on his PhD, but was obviously on a tea break when they handed out common sense. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I had actually met him casually a couple of times in the past. That's why he looked familiar, but still didn't recall his face. I'm pretty sure he has had to rush home now to change his boxers and do some damage control. (laughs) So listening now, you know, it's not just the young who deal with these dating disasters. Mm, Oh, well, back to the drawing board. (laughs) I mean, I, I hear from my mom like, all the time is back on the the dating scene and it's it's a fucking nightmare no matter what age you're yeah at. yeah thank you so much for writing in Truly. like that is just Aww. such a bummer i feel so bad and you never want to be that person oh my with God. your friend you're Especially absolutely right your friend, you know? somebody you see all the time yeah That's so awful yeah and to know it's like the person you're with like you had sex that morning they got <gasps> up and they were like oh, i'm just gonna run and do some errands or whatever oh and to know God. that that's what that's they were what doing they did with the expectation that they were going to come home and you were going to go out for dinner. Wow. wow. That's such a betrayal. Yeah, wow. It's awful. Ugh. Wow. Well, I have a listener story as well. Um, she says, hello, I have a worst date story that isn't the best, but horrible in an ick kind of way. Oh, before I met my angel of a husband, I went on a date with this guy who was in several of my classes as we had the same major after months of him sitting next to me and attempting to flirt. I agreed Uh to go on a date. He picked me up at my friend's apartment in his super nice Range Rover. That chain smoker song just came out. So I was intrigued by the river. Anyways, he takes me to Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm a vegetarian and didn't want to be rude. Oh, God. So I ordered fries and carrots. <laughs> yeah, there's really yeah. nothing. I mean, I think maybe now Salad. Buffalo Wild Wings has started doing like... Beyond. Ca- or cauliflower, oh, I yeah. think. Like buffalo cauliflower. But yeah, there's really... Yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings is not the place if no. you're a vegetarian. Uh, he would not stop talking about his parents' house in Highland Park, Ugh. a stupid, nice, old, rich neighborhood in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> it's the neighborhood in Ugh. the DFW. So he goes on and on about how they bought his Rover and how once he got super upset while on their boat and he threw his phone off the side, <sighs> then proceeded to tell me how his dad apologized to him and immediately ordered him a new phone. Uh, okay. Why do you think gonna, that that story makes you sound good? That's like endearing. It makes you sound like a baby. It, it makes does. You sound like a toddler. Which is not, a tra- yeah, exactly. Anytime I said literally anything, he would respond with, you are just so pretty. Wow. I want to slap the fuck out of this man. <laughs> I, that is so, <laughs> so condescending. So condescending. And don't get me wrong. I love a good compliment, but holy shit. That's I could not, not say is. a damn no. thing without him shoving. You're pretty Ugh. down my throat. Also, I was so hungry and I was getting annoyed. <laughs> he finally took me back to my friend's apartment and he tried to kiss me and I jumped out of his car and said, I'll see you in class. Bye. I wish I could remember everything he said, but it was so long ago. He referred to his dad as daddy and I wanted Ugh. to throw up my carrots. Oh, no. Daddy? A grown man a grown referring man? to his dad to as God. daddy. Uh-uh. <laughs> I don't like it when grown women refer to their dad as daddy. Yeah. I, I definitely don't don't want to hear uh, mm, mm. dad pops father daddy, daddy. 
daddy. It's oh, like, oh, no. God. <laughs> oh. That's I different. I fucking hate that. It's different. different. I, ever, yeah. I know I've told this story. But do you guys remember, I used to, um, when I, I worked at the salon in Columbus and in German Village, and my the first guy I assisted, he was like, you can call me daddy. And I was like, absolutely fucking not. Can, no, I can't. You'll fucking never. Ooh, no, it's never going to happen. It's a hard pass for me, dog. <laughs> I was like, absolutely not. No. You worked for him? Yes. He was, I assisted disgusting. him. I was I was assigned to be his assistant. Yeah. That's not okay. No. Uh-uh. no that not guy, at all. That he guy so got gross. times up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know he did. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. He did marry one of his assistants. Later. Oh, shocking. Yeah, I know. It was weird too because he used to like kind of like walk her. It was weird. Like he'd put his hand on her back of her neck. Ew. And when they were out, it was so weird. Uh, oh, uh, I hate that. I hate I it. I hate that. Have you seen that TikTok? It made me think of you, Christina, where it was just like working in a restaurant with men versus with women. And <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it's with women. It's like, oh, I'm just, I'm going to come right behind you. Can I get that um, towel over there? And uh-huh. like, oh, yeah, sure. And it's like working with men. They're like grabbing your waist. Oh, to, like absolutely. moving you out of the way. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, that is so <laughs> triggering. Mm-hmm. It's Mo- so true. Grabbing your waist to, to move, move you. you. Yeah. yeah that is so oof. yeah i hate that so much so much all right <laughs> oh, all right so mine's funny <laughs> i was in college at the university of idaho and i owned a 1972 dodge coronet station wagon awesome yeah if you've never seen one of these things they're about as long as a football field <laughs> yep. yeah it's like a boat and <laughs> does that have the wood panel probably right dodge probably yeah you can fold down all the seats except for the front seat and basically have like a full bed back there behind the driver's seat as a photographer i stuck foam rubber back along with some sleeping bags and a bunch of other stuff that i used to go when i went up to the mountains by myself on weekends to shoot pictures it was much preferable than freezing in a tent so one day in my photography class, this girl and I were getting along pretty well. So I asked her if she wanted to go out for pizza and beer. She accepts and she's very chatty, smiley, touchy. I think this is going to be something good. Until she gets to your murder car. I pick her up on Saturday night. And she is her usual bubbly sm- self, smiling and laughing about halfway to the pizza place. She suddenly clams up <laughs> and starts staring at the floor. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, it's fucking Ted Bundy right she, now. <laughs> she answers my questions with one word answers and absolutely does not engage me through dinner. After dinner, she tells me that she doesn't feel well and wants to go home. Uh-huh. And as we approach her dormitory, she literally flies out of the car and goes inside. I am completely confused. And I'm trying to think about what I may have done on my way home. And at the stoplight, there's headlights behind me and it's annoying. So I look back in my rear view to find out what this asshole's doing. It's then that I notice that I basically have a motel room fully made up <laughs> right behind my driver's seat. Yes. There wasn't a second date. No. Yeah. <laughs> what? What is she so upset about? I don't know. You picked her up in a studio apartment, my dude. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. Uh, She's like, no, not no, having thank this. You. No, thank you oh, very much. Oh, my God. I see. I I kind of love that because yeah. it's, it's totally like he was not thinking of that completely oblivious, completely oblivious yeah. to but it she was like um uh-huh no thank you yeah and he totally didn't get upset because as soon as he saw he knew he was He's like, like oh, oh god what yeah, a yeah, yeah. dummy right yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah i would have ran out of like that one's too. on me that, that one's one. on me i, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> fully expect that understandable oh my gosh <sighs> well you guys want to take five and then we'll come back with the tainted love yeah. sounds good your teenager just raided the fridge and walked out the back door. Bye, Mom. Go he yelled something over his shoulder that you only half heard. This is the last time you've seen him. You try to remember those words to help the police find him, but you can't. What if your daughter disappeared? Your mother? Your son? What if years have passed and you're no closer to finding them? When a person disappears, the story doesn't stop there especially for families. Each week, Missing brings you stories of missing persons and justice sourced from the case file of the nonprofit Private Investigations for the Missing. Together, we help raise awareness, elicit tips, and put pressure on police to keep searching. Listeners say Missing is the most binge-worthy podcast of all time. Search Missing wherever you listen to podcasts. Missing, where mysteries have a mission. 
Do you find it hard to sleep at night? Then the Sleep Cove podcast can help you. Hi, I'm Christopher Fitton, the voice and clinical hypnotherapist behind Sleep Cove. I want you to have the best night's sleep and leave behind any stress or anxiety. Sleep Cove features sleep hypnosis, meditations, and bedtime stories, all designed to help you get a restful and peaceful night's sleep. The podcast also has many self-improvement episodes, including how to clear your anxiety and others on boosting your self-esteem. There are dozens of original stories where we explore the Venice canals, visit ancient Greece, or go to a cosy cabin in the woods. And there are also classic tales like Peter Pan and even some mystery detective stories with Poirot and Sherlock Holmes. Search for Sleep Cove on Spotify or Apple Podcasts to see why Sleep Cove helps millions of people sleep deeply all night long. Would you go on a podcast with everyone you've hooked up with? I told you I just wasn't that into you. Then you, you call me a hit it and quit it girl. I'm Billy Presida, host of the Man Whore Podcast. And in 2014, I started interviewing my exes about why we didn't work out. Don't get offended. You were not Before. the best sub. You were bad Fair. at it. I have more than six episodes, I swear. We had an argument about what bukkake meant. That is the weirdest. <laughs> Do you remember that? I also get into it with a slew of comedians, porn stars, sex educators, coaches, actors, musicians, and more. So every time someone posts Black Lives Matter now, I'm like, but are you doing the work? Have you eaten my booty? <laughs> Tune in for more on romance, kink, queerness, heartbreak, hookups, and finding the one. Or the ones. Or the one for tonight. And you know, I'm like a size queen, so I'm just like big and I'm like, okay, like, so what's up? Subscribe to the Man Whore Podcast wherever you listen to audio. And stay slutty. And we're back. Okay, so I have the tainted love this week. Full disclosure. <laughs> I spent like two and a half hours and I was really excited about it too. So I spent like, it's it's no one's fault. I spent two and a half hours writing this thing. I started writing it and I was like, man, this sounds familiar. But the problem is <laughs> I watch so much true crime stuff that sometimes I don't know if it's something that we have done or if it's a story that I have like seen the dateline for right, or right. watched a snap on or like something like that. So I, so we keep a spreadsheet of like all of the like things that we've done. And so I searched the spreadsheet and I'm like, it's not in here. We're good. <laughs> and so I spent like two and a half hours, seven pages of notes. Oh my God. Oh my Literally, God. No. I was on the last line, the last line. It was post conviction, right? So it was like the end of my story. And I was like, no, no, no. This, this sounds, it feels, it too... feels wrong. Yeah. And <laughs> oh so no. I searched the sheet again by the victim's name, and there it fucking was. And I was like, so when I tell you, I finished my notes on this tainted love maybe 10 minutes before you knocked on my door <laughs> oh wow <laughs> this morning so i uh yeah it, it was a is a last minute hail mary but i think it's it's a great story okay i am going to tell you i always get confused whether we've done a story who's done the story we were in new orleans i have to tell you this because i feel like you'll appreciate this yes when I'm we sure were in new orleans they were they we did the ghost tour and one of the first stories they told was uh -huh, zach and addy Zach, I was like, oh, I did that story. I like, and I was like, not no, you like, didn't. No, Keegan did that story. I was like, that's right. Keegan did do that story. I heard you were very disruptive on that tour. Oh, Christina yes. was like, Christina Both was like, of us. We were, oh, we were. Yeah. You were drunk and like correcting the tour guide. Oh my God, we <laughs> were like, awful. With my Her friend kids. did this on our we podcast. We were and <laughs> awful. We were awful. We, we left the tour and it was yeah. for everyone's good. <laughs> they probably so. applauded, you know. Like, yeah. Oh my God, RIP us with those hurricanes. Jesus, oh that was a mistake. Lord. Hurricanes Oof. are a dangerous game my friends oh. like just a delicious icy mm -hmm. but i just like the idea of being drunk and sugar, sugar high, high at yeah. the same time it was like awful that it, crash is intense oh the the hurricane <laughs> hangover was crash 
Chris rarely ever gets upset with me, but he was like, <laughs> he, he goes, he goes, honestly, you and Christina talking about how you guys were going to be who you were going to be when you guys were older. Like Eric and I didn't exist in this storyline. <laughs> he was like, I was so sad. I was like, oh my God, yeah. we're off. I didn't mean it like that, but we were like, yeah. this is who we're going to be when we're 60. We're going to be like walking around and like... <laughs> <laughs> turbans and like house dresses and that is the life yeah yeah, yeah. oh god amazing <laughs> we, okay we we're making plans for our future oh yeah i did mean, not include them at all <laughs> how many times have we done that where we're like look at this old lady island where they all like yeah. moved into a golden girls house together in like a practical magic house by the sea and i'm like this the guys amazing. are like um excuse me <laughs> hi where are we in this scenario <laughs> okay all right <laughs> Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I am going to tell the story of Shayna Hubers and Ryan Poston. Okay. So Shayna was born on April 8th, 1991 in Lexington, Kentucky. So she's an Aries gang gang. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you can just take a look at Shayna as somebody. She's So she's a year younger than me. So we would have been in high school at around the same time. And at that time period, especially like there's a certain type of person that you can just look at and you're like, that bitch was popular. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you can just tell that like, there's something about her. You know what kind of kid she was. She was smart, popular, good at sports, bubbly, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. well-liked, just stereotypical popular girl, um, that we all went to school with. If there's one thing though, that people were like, this is the only thing about Shayna that like drives us bananas is that she was really like larger than life. She would make a huge deal out of like little things. She was very, very dramatic like that. Wait, she's an Aries. You don't say (laughs) (laughs) that doesn't feel familiar at all. (laughs) So if she was happy, she was like over the top happy. If she was sad or angry, it was like the biggest deal in the world. And she would like exaggerate and blow everything out of proportion she had this real flair for the dramatic and in fact drama was one of her favorite subjects in school cassie looks guilty i don't know what you're talking about sounds (laughs) i cannot relate you right now (laughs) to this at all i don't know what you're talking about Shayna was also super boy crazy and she would get very intense very quickly are you literally is this just about me? Yeah, guess it's like, feel, is this an intervention? I, I'm hurting <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but so she would get very, very intense with these boys very quickly. And if her feelings weren't reciprocated, she was known to throw like tantrums about it. So even though she was popular, she was also considered a bit of a loose cannon. Like people were just like, they knew that like it, you didn't want to get on Shayna's bad side. It's just a lot. Okay. So after high school, she went on to pursue a degree in psychology at the University of Kentucky, where she absolutely thrived and excelled. No surprises there. She was very academically gifted. While at college at the age of 19, Shayna meets 29-year-old Ryan Poston. So Ryan was born on December 30th, 1982, though his Capricorn, Capricorn, which he he has a few days older. He has real Capricorn energy so it's chris and i Uh yes yeah he's very very driven so though his parents divorced when he was young he remained close with not only both of his parents but also his stepfather after his mom remarried he had three younger sisters and was as well and overall the family just seemed really really close like it was one of those demi moore ashton kutcher and bruce willis situations where it's just like everyone kind of just got along um and he's, he really doted on his younger sisters as well. They had a really good relationship. Ryan was also really academically gifted, graduating college with a triple major yeah, in history, geography, and political science. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a lawyer. Yes. That's pre-law yep. shit right yep. there. After college, he decided to go to law school where he had a lot of success. And by the time he meets Shayna in 2011, he's a successful young attorney. So wow. 29, he's I love it. off to a really great start. That was the most Capricorn thing I've ever heard. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Triple major. He's like going for yeah. it. <laughs> Truly. I think um, I just recently did one of the um, TikToks for like the I'm a bitch. Yes, I'm yeah. a bitch. I mean, I'm a bitch. Your, it was your just chart. Like my chart is just like, I should have that Capricorn drive and Virgo rising. You should like your own I business should've, right now should uh-huh. but it's that gemini and aquarius that i've don't got tell me my, what to do my yeah. chart that just 
mm-hmm. fucking sneaks up and bites me in the ass. Yeah, yeah. That it's your, that your chart <laughs> is. It's no wonder that you have a lot of face on your face. You look yeah. at that chart <laughs> and you're like, that is resting <laughs> bitch face in a chart. <laughs> yes. like, Absolutely. <Amazing>. Yeah. <laughs> so Ryan and Shayna met through Facebook when he liked a bikini picture she had posted. So I think that they had a connection because I was like, how was he on her Facebook? But Shayna was friends with Ryan's step cousin. So I think that he saw like people you may know or whatever oh, yeah, and follow sure. her. He had just come out of a serious relationship and wasn't looking for anything serious. He was just looking for kind of like a fling. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Shane is hot. <laughs> I there think you that's, go. that's as far as he's the like, thing I he went. He's like, I literally like your bikini picture. Exactly. <laughs> the end. Exactly. Like- Shayna on the other hand, had other plans. So once they met in person, Shayna fell hard and fast. We do for, love a Capricorn. For uh, Ryan. She immediately became pretty clingy in the relationship. And to give you an idea, over the course of what would turn out to be their 18-month relationship, Shayna would send Ryan a total of 50,000 text messages. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I, got, me. I shivered. Dude, yeah. that, ain't, that yeah. ain't me. And to give you some perspective, it said that for every one text Ryan would send Shayna, Shayna would send the equivalent of 50. No, that ain't me back. at all. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes. That ain't me. <clears throat> you lost mm-hmm. me. We don't like that. We don't no, like we that. We don't like no. that a lot. <laughs> Okay, and he's busy. And yeah, he's, he's trying fucking to work. Turning it, <laughs> like Bing, 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 Bing. No, no. My, so no. immediately after meeting Shayna, uh, Shayna started telling her friends that Ryan was the one. So she's 19 years old, she's like, oh, I'm done. No, I'm done. I'm found. I found my soulmate. Thank you very much. Shayna was also deeply insecure about Ryan's ex girlfriend Lauren, um, that he had just come out of that serious relationship oh. with. To the point where she kept a picture of Lauren on her phone. Oh, that's fucking no. weird. And when that, she was no. out with Ryan, she would go up to strangers and show them the picture and say, I'm prettier than her. Right? <gasps> oh. Imagine <laughs> how uncomfy Ryan is standing there. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> that's that's tw- 19 years old. So right there. scary. Honestly, like, that's 19. Oof. That is insecurity. Insecure. Oh, yeah. Honey. On a, on a mm-hmm. bun. So this obviously led to a lot of arguments you in think? the relationship. Ryan seemed to like Shayna, but it was just a lot. She was needy and obsessive and deeply insecure and it would get to be too much. So he would end things with Shayna and then she would go do something and they would end up back together again. And this just happened over and over and over on a loop. They would break up, get back together, break up. We've all known this couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. So throughout all of this, I feel like both Ryan and Shayna were being honest about where they stood. They just stood on opposite ends. Like Ryan was saying, like, I like you, but I don't see this relationship going anywhere serious. And she's like, yes. She's like, I, I can do change see us you. Married. Yes. And she's like, I love you. She's like, no, I love you. She's just one of those people who refused to accept the break yeah. she was also like one of those people that's 19 like all this stuff i'm like th- did i have these thoughts when i was 19 100. yes but you know you just keep them deep, deep yeah deep bury down. that shit bury down it. don't you can't you can't let don't look. lead with that you don't lead with your crazy we've keep all it. done things that are regrettable and you look back on and you cringe or they wake you up yeah. in the middle of the night like i can't believe i fucking did that thing you know yeah but i've never kept a picture of my that's my right. boyfriend's ex-girlfriend on my phone to that's show to exactly strangers right. yeah. yeah yeah no that would be that would be a shame in, in my for deepest sure. insecurity maybe maybe after like several glasses of wine i might text it to you guys yeah oh. i'd be like do you think i'm like, prettier than yes. her absolutely and, yeah. even, and, and even that is that, the acceptable that's right and <laughs> even that i no would, I would come back sober later and be like i'm so sorry <laughs> I, I feel like that was embarrassing you know <laughs> yeah mm but because Ryan didn't see this as a serious relationship, he would see other people during their breaks. Like oh, during their many no. breaks, he would see other people. And when Shayna found out that Ryan was seeing other people, she went bananas about it. Obviously, she would take her texting level up a game, uh, up a level. She would call him constantly, especially if she knew that he was out with someone else. And Ryan wouldn't always reply. But when he did, it was usually to tell her that she needed to stop, that he didn't have the patience for this. And it was driving him insane. And just like, please, like, leave me alone. Like it's because she was just 
constant, constant text messages and phone calls. Oof. But Shayna really didn't understand why he didn't want to be with her. And she would tell her friends like, why doesn't he want to be with me? I don't understand why he doesn't want to be with me. somebody who's had too many yeses in their lives. Uh And she's like, I'm perfect for him. I do everything for him. And she did when they were together. She did do everything in him for him. She insisted upon it. She would do his laundry. She would do his grocery shopping. She would walk his dogs. But this actually made Ryan feel uncomfortable. I need you to need me. Yeah. It made him feel uncomfortable because it felt controlling. Like yeah, it wasn't, yeah. she wasn't doing these things just out of pure, like love to make his life easier. It she was, probably thought she was, but it was, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, it was manipulative. Control. Yeah. Yeah. About a year after Ryan and Shayna first meet in the spring of 2012, they are on the outs again. And at this point, Ryan has started his own law firm and is really, God damn, yes, dude, this guy is yeah, at like 30. He's got his own law firm. Aspirational. Mm-hmm. And he's doing his best to move on from Shayna. He's had enough at this point and kind of just wants to be left alone. Shayna does not like this. So she takes things up a notch. Now, she's not only calling and texting Ryan all the time, she's calling his neighbors. She's calling his oh, friends, no. trying to get into contact, trying to figure out where he is. That no. is so awkward. Uh huh. She's calling his law firm, no. asking oh, for him. No, fucking mm-hmm. not. And initially, Ryan would take her calls at work because if he didn't, she would just keep calling and calling and calling, and it was disruptive because he's at work. But eventually, he had to just stop taking her calls in hopes that if he ignored her, she'd stop. When he started ignoring her calls at work, Shayna borrowed her friend's cell phone and started texting Ryan's work phone, pretending to be a potential client. (gasps) But when this potential client was just berating him with personal attacks and insulting messages, Ryan quickly figured out that this was Shayna. So now she's messing up his bag, right? Like you're getting in between me and my bag. I'd be fucking pissed, right? Yeah, that that kind of thing is is so... I I don't like being texted all the time. Like uh-uh. we've talked about uh-uh. this. Like yeah. there are times where I just set my phone down and I walk away from it for a couple hours. Oh yeah, yes, totally. just for like as a you break. should. Yeah. As you should, because I'm like it. I don't I get need to be constantly reachable, if, and I don't like it. If I'm feeling overwhelmed, I will put my phone on like do not disturb, and at least it doesn't buzz me. And then I'm mm-hmm. like, when I am ready, when I have like the like emotional mental bandwidth to tackle this, then I will open all of my messages mm-hmm. and respond to them all. But like I yeah. just can't right now, you know. Yeah, I literally had a week just like that last week. Or, and I'm so, normally yeah. somebody who's never had, I am so like curious, George, like I need to know what's going on all the time. I need yeah. to have this text. Yes. Like I've, what if, what if, what if I'm like totally FOMO, mm-hmm. but I literally just was like, had one of those weeks with PMS and yeah. I'm not somebody who gets it. So when I do, it's like, feels very disruptive yep. to me. And mm-hmm. I mean, I, well, I was in a place where I was like, I can't have any yeah because i'm taking everything wrong yeah i'm taking everything like i just need to like shut well, it like off six from- planets were in retrograde too oh. so that was also probably <laughs> i i am like the opposite of fomo i have jomo <laughs> the joy of missing out <laughs> like, oh, yeah i'm just gonna read this book i get to stay home stay home watch Amazing. the serpent queen <laughs> this is <Yeah>. great <laughs> So every time Ryan would block Shayna, she'd find some other way of getting into contact with him. At one point, she gets an out-of-state number and starts calling Ryan with that since he wouldn't recognize the number. She figures out the password to Ryan's Facebook and logs in and monitors his messages. So if he gets messages from women, he deletes. she deletes them before he can see them. And she I starts going got through. got that like Michael Jordan thing mm-hmm. in my head Stop right now. Stop it. Get help. Get help. That's <laughs> just like, yeah, stop. Girl, you are getting a psychology degree. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Nothing is from up? your class not, is not, triggering not, something not, for it's you. Not pinging. You got no self awareness. Um, so she also starts going through his friends list and deleting people who she finds threatening. So she's, she, she's deleting women from his friends list as well. She also starts randomly turning up at his work and refusing to leave. I and s- no, this is bad period but it should also be said ryan and Shayna live 80 miles away <gasps> from each other so she's not just like swinging in like she has to it's an hour and a half drive between where she lives and goes to school and where he lives and works no no, no. yes 
So she is driving 80 miles to randomly pop up at his job and not Dude, leave. at no point on that fucking hour and a half drive, no. nothing's coming in your head saying, this, this is feels, a lot. This, this feels, feels like a lot. This is a lot. Maybe he doesn't want to see me. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So at this point, Ryan is really struggling. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to get rid of her or make her see that he's really not interested in her. Like it is one of those things where it's just like if you break up with someone and they just refuse to accept the breakup. Yeah. Like, what are you supposed yeah, to do? And like, as much as we talk about, like, you know, I doubt if he went to the cops that they would take it seriously at all. Oh, yeah. Because they barely take yeah. it seriously when it's a woman uh-huh. talking about a man. But they definitely no. feel like they wouldn't take it seriously yeah, with like, the flip side of what, it. What? She's a crazy ex-girlfriend? Sorry. Like, yeah. deal with it. Like, they just, I'm sure that yeah, they and wouldn't. And this, this is just mm-hmm. as scary. Yep. Just oh, as yeah. much harassment, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, she hasn't done anything yet. Yep. So when friends ask why he keeps getting back with Shayna, he tells them that she makes him feel so guilty. She gaslights and manipulates him into thinking that this is all his fault. Dude, you're he's a smart man. And a terrible person. But that like emotional yeah. manipulation is hard and it, yeah. it does go both ways. Like it's yeah. not Which just is why women. I brought it up because yeah. I'm like, you have somebody here who is, you know, Mr. Top of his class, Mr. Uh-huh. Triple major. Yeah. Uh, smart, smart. Mm-hmm. And still getting completely manipulated by yeah. an emotion yeah so he'll get back together with her eventually out of guilt and he tells this to her face like he's like i'm only with you because i you make me feel so bad anytime i try and break things off with you that like i it's just easier for me to stay with you than to deal with you whenever mm. i'm trying to break up with you right but Unfortunately, I think that this has the effect of making Shayna believe it reinforces that yeah. idea that like if he, he does, does break her. up or if he does break up with her, she just needs to be as like persistent as possible and he'll take her back because it's just yeah. less work for him to do that, you know? Wow. But Ryan is clearly starting to get really worried. He's texting friends and family saying things like this is getting to restraining level crazy. She keeps showing up at my condo and refusing to leave. And quote, she almost scares me. So he's saying, I mean, he's scared. But it's one of those things where, again, as a man, I think that it's hard to admit that like you're afraid <laughs> like, yeah, of this flip, person flip the genders yeah. and it's yeah. terrifying yes. and it, you shouldn't have to you we should be able to say like this stuff happens to guys too and mm-hmm. it's just as fucking scary yeah yeah one time ryan told Shayna that he was turning his phone off and she sent him over 100 texts during that time period and then showed up at his house let herself in and refused to leave no in the end ryan left his own house just to get away from Shayna. Wow. Like he went and stayed somewhere else because he was like, I can't get her to leave and I don't want to be here with her. In fall of 2012, Shayna is still clinging on to Ryan and it doesn't seem like a whole lot has changed. She seems to think that there is still something there, but Ryan doesn't see it that way. He's also going through some difficulties at work. At this point, he's his law firm is being sued for some reason. So it's he's got a lot on his plate and he just doesn't have the bandwidth to deal with Shayna's stuff right now. So he's paying less and less attention to Shayna and in fact has been actively trying to see other people. When Shayna finds out that Ryan is seeing other people, she goes ballistic. She starts texting her friends about how much she hates Ryan and even on one occasion jokes about killing Ryan and playing it off as an accident. Those aren't jokes. No. I mean, I we I can go through yeah. our entire text thread of like all of the stuff that we text and, and we joke and stuff like that. But yeah. like one of you guys it joked like about killing. No, like, no. I mean, even if you're look, you're 19, you're going through or at this point, she's probably 20. You're going through a breakup or what you think is is a breakup. And we've all been there. I think the the part of like, I, I hate him, blah, blah, blah. That stuff is yeah, fairly yeah, normal fine. things yeah. for people to say. But like to joke that you're going to kill him and make it look like an accident lol yeah. is not that's not an that's, lol no even even when you were breaking up with your ex and like going through your divorce and all that stuff i mean that was that's a lot going through yeah. a divorce is a big deal i would be concerned if you were like lol gonna kill him yeah, yeah. and yeah <laughs> no, i would be too yeah, yeah. i never even like i think if you're in a better headspace that doesn't come into your your mind right. so this is obviously emblematic of something truly mm-hmm. wrong yeah. in right, her right. brain yeah 
On the 11th of October, 2012, Shayna is still kind of forcing her way into Ryan's life. She's invited herself to his parents' house um, for this dinner party. And I have to imagine that at this point, Ryan is just kind of picking his battles with Shayna. It's kind sure. of one of those things where it's like... But what's his family? His I mean, to be like, what the fuck Well, at this anymore? party, Ryan takes his dad aside and confides in him that he just doesn't know what to do about Shayna, that he can't get rid of her. Um... And he, he's just, he's really puzzled. And he's telling his dad that he's just done now. Like he's done. Like this isn't like, it's not fun. It's not fulfilling to him at all. He's busy. He's tired. Like the last thing he needs is somebody who's bringing more like stress and anxiety right. to his life. Right. He doesn't mm. want to drag this out anymore. So after the party, they go back to Ryan's condo and they have a heated discussion. We don't know what about, but I imagine he's telling her yeah, like, like this is it. We, this is it. Like we can't, we can't keep going on like this. And he goes to bed after their heated discussion. He wakes up the next morning and finds not only Shayna, but Shayna's mother in his living room. It turns out that after their argument, Shayna called her mom at three in the morning saying that she wasn't feeling well. And could her mom please come be with her at Ryan's house? So Shayna's mom gets up at 3 a.m. Oh and drives 80 miles no. to Ryan's house to spend the night with Shayna. And when Ryan gets up and sees them there, Shayna tells Ryan that she's having chest pains and her mom is there to drive her to the ER. After they leave, Shayna is texting Ryan constant updates. She's like, I'm at the hospital. They're doing an EKG. They're prescribing all these meds. I'm so sick, et cetera, et cetera. Her and her mom went shopping. They were what? out shopping. She was just trying to manipulate Ryan into staying with her if he That's thought she terrible. was sick. That's awful. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the whole time she's out shopping with her mom, she's Googling heart conditions, heart disease. No. What are the symptoms of high blood <gasps> pressure? What are the medications? No. And texting that information to Ryan. Wow. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to that evening and Ryan is doing his best to ignore Shayna because he actually has a date that night. He has a date with the current Miss Ohio, Aubrey Bolt. Ryan and Aubrey had been chatting for a while on Facebook, but this was their first time going out there. This was going to be their first date. Ryan didn't tell Shayna for obvious reasons, but surprise, surprise, Shayna already knew because she had been monitoring his Facebook activity. <laughs> Two days before Ryan and Aubrey were set to go on their date, Shayna had actually sent a friend request to Aubrey and had been stalking her profile. So she had like been stalking Aubrey's profile. So right before Ryan was about to leave for his date, she knew what time his date was supposed to be. She shows up at his place. Now, Ryan was a gun enthusiast. He owned several guns and had a license to carry a concealed weapon. So he would take his gun with him when he left the house. So he took it with him when he went to work and stuff like that. And then when he got home, he had a habit of taking his gun out and setting it on his table, like his kitchen table. Oof. Around 9 p.m. that night, a call comes through to 911. It's Shayna. She's saying, I just shot my boyfriend in self-defense 10 or 15 minutes ago. No. She says that he beat her and tried to carry her out of the room. And when he reached for his gun, she reached for it and pulled the trigger. Also, I have to say, bad acting. It's one of those calls where yeah. you're like, okay. this is... No. Yeah. yeah. And this is something that will continue through this whole next part because... This case gets a lot of comparisons to Jodi Aris's case, and it, you see why already. But yeah. then once we get into the interrogation room, it's very similar where Jodi Arias did a lot of weird shit yeah. in the interrogation room. She does too. Like, it's very weird. So police rush Oof. to the scene, but by the time they arrive, Ryan is already dead. He's been shot six times. Oh Damn. my goodness. So they arrest Shayna straight That's away. That's not an accident. Right? That doesn't feel like an the accident. The gun went off. Six times? <laughs> they arrest Shayna straight away and get her into an interrogation room. And right away, she asks for an attorney. And so they're like, okay, well, we can't ask her any questions. We probably won't get anything out of her, you know, until her attorney gets here. But lucky for them, Shayna likes to fucking talk. To herself? To them. But they're not, but they're not, they're not asking, asking her, her questions. Like, they don't ask her a single question and She's she talks delivered. nonstop for three hours. Oh my goodness. Like, oh, let's go check to see if your attorney's here. Oh, you know, go yeah. keep 
she just keeps talking she just keeps talking and she doesn't stop talking and i highly recommend if you want to watch this you can find clips they're all over the place like you can watch yeah her her name sounded familiar yeah Yeah. you know what i mean i've definitely seen Mm -hmm. seen stuff but i've never you know deep dove on this case yeah She goes from telling them details of the murder and what happened to complimenting the teeth of one of the officers. Wow. She's like, she's like, you have really great teeth. Do you have orthodontia? Like, it's so, it's so weird. Then she's asking, she's like, if I have to go to jail, can I have my cell phone in jail? Are we allowed (gasps) to have showers in jail or do do people just get really dirty? Like, she's like, it's so weird. It's so weird. And the cops, she's so exhausting in the way that she just like keeps talking and keeps wow. going that the cops are taking shifts. Like they're like, they're switching. Oh my God. And as far as like who can be in the room with her because it's so just, much. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Shayna would, and when they, when they were like, okay, we're going to leave you alone in the room for a second. She would do this thing where she would start like doing this over the top crying, like hyperventilating thing when they said they were going to leave her alone. And then the second, and you can see it on the fucking video. Right. The second they shut the door, drops it completely, like completely (sighs) drops it. Like, wow. It's so strange to look at. And she knew she was being recorded because she would look at the camera. Like, so she knew the camera was there. It was it's so strange. That's that's somebody that that's not well in touch with yeah. with everything. Well, yeah, that sounds sounds yeah. like somebody that is not well. Eventually, she would be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Yep. But I know people with borderline personality disorder, and so I do want to give a disclaimer that like sure. having BPD does not make you correct. Like it may make you more like prone to certain things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna do absolutely this. Like, you know absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah no i i have i have um a family member with bpd yeah. and it's you know it's it's nothing like this you know it's it's a struggle certainly but it definitely doesn't mean right 100 of the time yeah. yeah yes yes anyway so during all of this Shayna is completely unable to keep her story straight during the initial 911 call, she said that she and Ryan had wrestled for the gun. But in the interview, she says that she picked up the gun first. Her story is that Ryan was beating her from the second she walked into the room. But she doesn't really have any physical bruises. She's got nothing. She's, she was looked at when she came in. There's not a scratch on her, really. She says that he picked her up and threw her onto the dining room table, but there's no evidence at the scene. In fact, there's a picture of the table and his his table was really messy. There was stuff all over it. So there's like, there's like a bottle of lotion. There's a a, a glass of water. Nothing is overturned. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. a man's table. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just like, sounds exactly right. It's the catch all table. Mm-hmm. It's yes, like yeah. the table's there to, to catch yeah, your shit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so her story basically changes every single time she tells it. And so it's obviously highly suspicious. She should have waited for a lawyer. <laughs> ah, her yeah. lawyer would have stopped her talking. Um, her explanation for why Ryan was shot so many times is that after she shot him the first time, he was lying face down, twitching, still alive, but she knew that he was going to die and she didn't want him to suffer. Oh. So she shot him an additional Ooh, five times. That's not, that ain't Ooh. it. That, yeah, you just admitted that like if you had called for help, if it was an accident and you shot him on accident, he, he was still alive. You could have called for help. Correct. You so chose now not to. She, wow. Right. And this is really upsetting and really like disturbing to me. And again, the way she says this to the officer as though this isn't something that's appalling to say to someone. She tells the officer that even if he wasn't going to die from that first shot to the face... It would have left him very deformed. And according to Shayna, Ryan was very vain and always wanted a nose job. Wow. So she shot him again in the face <gasps> and apparently gave him the nose job he always wanted. Oh, my God. This she woman. says that to the oh officer. Oh, my God. How could you say that? Like, and not think that these people are going to think that you're a fucking monster. Like, you have no I self-awareness. Be, I would never be able to interview somebody because I couldn't hide. Oh, my face on my face. Oh, yeah. no. Could yeah. you imagine if somebody no. told you that? I'd be like, oh, what, bitch? <laughs> what? No. So after this admission, officers leave the room and Shayna gets up. She starts dancing. She's dancing around the interrogation room. She's singing Amazing Grace, like full volume gospel singing with runs, honey. 
oh. singing amazing at grace and chanting. She starts sing chanting, sing chanting. I did it. Yes, I did it. Oh, yeah. And again, she knows she's being recorded. It's like, it's so weird. It's just, yeah. She was charged Ooh. with murder and her bail was set at $5 million. So Shayna stayed in prison until her trial, which didn't start until three years later. Whoa. Yes. Her defense was obviously self-defense. At the trial, the prosecution um, did bring up all of Shayna's obsessive and stalker behavior. They also reveal, and this is so sad. This is maybe the saddest part of this. They reveal that they have evidence that Ryan locked himself in his bedroom oh, trying God. to get away from Shayna. And Shayna Googled how to pick a lock with a bobby pin. Oh, my goodness. And got into his room. Yeah, doesn't sound like self-defense. The prosecution also brought one of Shayna's cellmates to the stand who said that Shayna had bragged on multiple occasions of killing Ryan. So she was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. But this conviction was overturned a year later when it was found out that one of the original jurors was a convicted felon, which was illegal in the state of Kentucky convicted felons are not allowed to serve on a jury. Mm -hmm. So Shana was given a second trial. It took another three years for that trial to begin. Ryan's poor fucking family. Awful. This is awful. Like it's so sad. Like the, the six I mean, is years. She at least in jail. She's in jail. Thank yes. God. She's not in, I don't think she's in prison prison, but she's in jail, like awaiting her second trial. Um, and so that took place in 2018 and this time, her defense team put Shayna on the stand to that testify. Feel like a good idea. Mm -mm, in her own defense, that which doesn't... seems very risky. That's. When on the stand, Shayna would say that Ryan was physically, mentally, emotionally, and sexually abusive throughout their relationship. During this trial, she also accused her father of being sexually abusive to her when she was a preteen and teenager. Objection, relevance. And said that the night, well, here's her relevance. She said that the night that she killed Ryan was the anniversary of when oh. her dad first sexually abused her. Oh my God, so, I'm so now, fucking furious right now. We obviously, on this podcast, I want to make this very clear, we take abuse and abuse allegations very seriously. Absolutely. But, well, but they have yeah. they have evidence that he locked himself in the mm -hmm. room. This is not somebody if if they're trying like hell to get away, right? That is not somebody that is right. I mean, that to me seems like a, a clue. And like, well, and there's there's more because well, first of all, we don't have any evidence that either of these men were abusive. Doesn't mean it didn't happen, but right. we we don't have. There's no evidence of that. And Shayna has admitted that in order to get sympathy and attention from Ryan throughout their relationship, that she had given herself bruises and claimed that Ryan had done it. So she'd lied about him abusing her in the past. So again, we don't know. There's no way to know if any of these abuse allegations are true, but we do know that she has admitted to lying about ab abuse allegations in the past. So wow. take that for what it is, you know. The prosecution, of course, picked apart her testimony, and in the end, the jury once again found Shayna Huber's guilty of murder and sentenced her to 40 years in prison. Now, here's here's another a couple of fun facts. So, 40 doesn't feel like enough, if I'm honest with you. Right. It seems like... She's going to be like, what, life. 60 something? Yeah. Well, I mean, probably older than that now because I'm, I think it goes into effect when the conviction, so she was closer to... 30? So they don't they don't take into consideration any of the years time that she served was, time served. I know I they have didn't. No idea. They didn't in the first trial. It was forty years from that date. I don't know Got about it. the second trial how they broke that down. But she was in jail during Jody Arias's trial. Yeah, and she was seen in jail watching Jody Arias's trial and taking notes. Oh my god! <laughs> I yeah yeah. Which no. is no. Yeah, uh, yeah, and she has since um, gotten married and divorced since her 2018 conviction. So, anyway, wow, it's a lot. I have never do, that. Really, is I've I've Jody Arias has been on my list for like yeah. a long so time, much. but it's so yeah. much. Yeah, it's intense. But this is it's similar. very similar. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's very similar. And it's, I I think it is important to show that like 
that that men get abused Absolutely, too, yeah, and they yes. get stalked, and mm-hmm. and that it's something that I think a lot of people laugh off or don't take as seriously. You're right, right. I mean, and this was the same time you had that like crazy ex girlfriend meme, and it was all really quite, you know funny. It was considered very funny, but this right. is beyond yeah that. Like this isn't something to really laugh at. This is extremely obsessive yeah. behavior. That you're right. If the genders were swapped on this everybody would be looking at this as like that is a very scary individual oh yeah and this outcome is going to be yeah bad you know um just yeah so just to like normalize anybody being in that situation regardless of the gender we yeah should yeah yeah and i've cons- seen concerned. a lot of people put um blame on Ryan for continuing to interact with her and continuing to go back to her. He did the until best you're, he could until do. you're he in that know. situation and stuff too, because I know we've talked about it on the podcast, like people that have been a little stalker ish. And sometimes it's like, it's weird. This fear of, of maybe you should block that person, but then you also kind of want to know yeah. what they're doing. And you don't want to set them off, right? Like you're, you don't know what's going to set them off. And so it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, I think in his mind, he was like, well, I can put up with this. I'll just go along to get along because I don't have the energy or whatever to deal with trying to end this right now. Like, I don't have it in me to try and do it. And he saw what happened every time he tried, which was just like an escalation. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Yeah, it's just it's really really Oof. sad. I feel so bad for his family. It's yeah. it's really tragic because he was somebody who um Seemed obviously like somebody that would have been like a real contributor. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like had he had big was, plans for his yeah. life and um mm. it's just really sad and it's sad that they his family had to be put through 6 years of Oof. of that, you know. So heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, well what are you guys watching this week? I actually went to the theater this week. Oh my gosh. The theater, the cinema. Uh, And you know, spooky season is coming. Very excited. And I went and saw Barbarian. Yeah. I love it. I heard it it was scary as hell. It is wild. It is one of those movies. I didn't find it. There are jumpy moments. Like there are definitely, it is one of those movies. Definitely go see it with a group in the movie theater because there's so much like bitch don't you know yeah <laughs> don't go down there eric keeps wanting to take me to go see smile, smile. I'll go and i'm with like you. oh, oh my no. god i will go that with fucking you. movie looks, looks terrifying mm-hmm. you yep absolutely <laughs> i will you. have nightmares for the rest of my life but Barbarian. i think the only way i could handle it would be in a in big a group. group oh yeah, yeah. I, I will go with you um barbarian is it, it's got enough levity like there's a, there's enough moments of just like absolute absurdity mm-hmm. in it that make it not as scary to me because justin long enters the picture and it is so like i love, I love over him. the top silly yeah. at at points that it's i i don't know i really enjoyed it also bill skarsgård hot love oh hot <laughs> yeah. he might be Skarsgård. my he might be my hater where i'm just like there's something weird about you mm-hmm I'm into it. Though. I'm like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I actually did kind of a theater thing. Um, we have a friend here. I think like now people are like, Oh, let's start going out and doing stuff again. And yeah. like trying to explore the world. I What's hope so. Happening. Right? Come to our live show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, come, uh, yes. Come to our live show. Um, but we did go to kind of a live theater experience. A friend of ours is doing like one of these kind of, it's like a, interactive theater kind of experience so you kind of go and it, it i it's hard to explain it has like um like you're kind of guided through everybody kind of experiences it a little bit differently but you interact as a guest in the american horror story hor- like yeah. murder house too yeah. which is like that's the selling point for me i'm like i just want to get in it that was, house it was really interesting it was really different it's hard to explain because you don't want to give anything away like right. but it is it was kind of a fun experience i love the idea of interactive theater it wasn't like too many people either where it was overwhelming it was mm-hmm. it was kind of cool and it was nice. spooky but it was Oh, I'm so excited yeah. for spooky season. Yeah. I am so, my Me body too. is ready. I am nice. I do, I have to, I always like, I'm a hitter. And so like anybody that took me to a place, I'd be like, I just want you to know, like if there's something that's going to jump out at me, I am a hitter. My, my limbs be, just, they, they just, react I'm independent a, from my body. If I'm a, 
if I get jump scared, you're going to get a fist to the eye. And yeah, I don't, I don't think that they can do that anymore. I think COVID yeah. took touching <laughs> off the menu for, for yeah. any spooky yep. season enthusiasts for haunted houses. You yeah. Know? I, I, I don't, I love all the scary stuff. I love haunted houses and stuff like that. I don't yeah. like being touched. Yeah. Like I don't, I will never go to a haunted house where they're allowed to touch you. Right. It just it's crosses not, a yeah, boundary It's not like a me. haunted house where they're oh, like, yes. Ooh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's more like a, again, an interactive theater. Mm-hmm. So I yes. mean like, like one person might take your hand and guide you someplace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, there is that, but it's not like, Ooh, jump, sc- you know, like yes, that kind of yeah. Thing. but mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was cool. I'm glad. Yeah. It was fun. Good. It was fun. Well, uh, I got a, a real upper for for you guys. I uh, have watched the first two episodes of the new Ken Burns, uh, the U.S. and the Holocaust, no. which w- it was fascinating. I, I love watching Ken Burns documentaries. Oh, so good. I, I definitely feel like this was a very passionate project for him. Um, it's very relevant. Mm. I definitely, it is a hard watch, but it's so... I think the thing that affects me the most is how much if you closed your eyes, you would think that this was happening right now, that it's such a mirror and it's done in such a way that it's not like beating you over the head with it either. It's it was incredibly well done. I think it's an important topic and I definitely recommend everybody watch it at some point. Oh, definitely. It's on my list for sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, if you guys have something that we should watch or read, if you want tickets to our live show at Dynasty Typewriter on October 28th at 730, go to our one-stop shop of a website. It's mywarstatepodcast.com, and we love you so much. Cheers. And he told the boys something like, I always wondered what it would feel like to kill someone. Don't you dare lie. You know what happens to people who lie. Are you fascinated by unexplainable crimes, conspiracies, and fringe culture? Each week, the Crawl Space Podcast brings you stories of the mysterious and bizarre, alongside interviews with experts and survivors. Host Tim Polleri and Lance Reinsterna from the hit show Missing Maura Murray tell the stories from harrowing survival and deep fakes to synchronicities and cryptozoology. Search Crawl Space wherever you listen to podcasts. Crawl Space, where crime meets culture. Hey, Worsties, as you know, we're all about sex positivity here. So I'm excited to share with you another juicy podcast that we know you'll love the Man Whore Podcast. On each episode, comedian Billy Presida talks to past hookups and special guests about sex, dating, and sexuality. You only have to read the titles of recent episodes to get a feel for what to expect. Celibacy, pegging, and finding your voice <laughs> is catching feelings chuggy, which absolutely it is. <laughs> and <laughs> Craigslist Adventures are all recent episodes. Craigslist Adventures, oh my God, that's got to be <laughs> insane. Yeah. The result is a hilarious and incredibly juicy podcast, and we highly recommend you check them out. Explore your curiosity with the Man Whore Podcast. Find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Cheers! Cheers.